Welcome to Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Outreach Connection today. I'm Sandy Axton, your host, and we're thrilled to be with you today and glad you are with us. So we're going to have a good uh, program here today. We're going to be talking about Harvest Outreach Ministries. But before that, I would like to take us to the scripture today. And we're going to go to Mark 16 and 15. And it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So today we're going to talk about Harvest Outreach Ministries, like I said, and I'm just thrilled to have Pastor Larry Hines and here. Pastor James Bridges with mm -hmm. us today. And there's a lot of things going on and there's a great thing and opportunity that people can be a part of and, yes. and give to. There's always something Amen. in the ministry, isn't it, that Amen. people Amen. can connect to. Amen. There's a work to do and right. they can do it That's and just right. be able. So just give us a little bit about um, Harvest Outreach Ministries, maybe a little bit of the history, the starting of it, and and the vision of Harvest Ministries. Okay. Well, uh, Harvest Outreach started in 2010 uh, through Pastor James and myself. God had put it on our hearts to, uh, you know, we'd always worked with those struggling with addictions and things like that, and uh, doing prison ministry through the years, I realized that, you know, there's folks, they need a place to go to, to stay, to to get their lives together and get that help that they need. And so we opened our first uh, Harvest House, which Harvest Houses are sober living residences, in uh, November of 2010. And then a few years later, we were able to open a house for women. And so it's a place for them, folks that might be coming out of recovery centers or uh, county jails or prisons or whatever they come and, and we uh, work with them of course our main goal is to introduce them to Jesus mm -hmm. but because uh, that's what makes the difference you know, always telling people they uh, everybody wants to know our success rate uh, so I've been doing this for many years and it's always been the same those that come to the Lord Jesus Christ and are delivered have it's a hundred percent right those that don't wind up back in their addictions or mm -hmm. back in jails or prisons or dead Right. So uh, we, we opened up under the umbrella of God's Harvesters. Uh, God's Harvesters is a ministry that I work with. We do prison and jails and international missions in uh, Vietnam and Philippines. And so we got started through them and then we became our own 501c3. And uh, God is just blessed and uh, we've just continued to prosper and uh, all that we've had need of, He has provided. Mm -hmm. We've had some awesome testimonies now of lives that have just been changed and turned around by the power of God. And it's just been a, a great ministry that the Lord has blessed. That is awesome. That is wonderful. So you mentioned that you all have um, the Harvest House. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about the ministry of that, um, what you have, your capacity and so forth in that area too. Well, with the Harvest House, we have uh, two. Lo we have uh, two locations. We have a men's house that holds about 18, and we have a ladies' house that holds about 11. Okay. Uh, we try to stay full because there's always needs. Right. There's always need. Um, I myself, you know, um, did almost a decade in prison. I've been to going to treatment since the 80s. And mm -hmm. you know, I've been uh, sober for about 18 years now of IV drug addiction, and uh, with, with that, we're able to uh, really. Um, hopefully open the eyes and the hearts of those men and women that are at the Harvest House in order to accept Christ, but also give them a safe, sober place to live mm -hmm. when they're going through all the legal problems, when they're going through all the uh, mental health stuff, when they're going through all the treatment uh, providers and those kind of things in order to give that into their lives. So it's become a really big success, I believe. And uh, because of that, we were able to really branch out into so many uh, churches and so many lives in, in, in our communities. That's wonderful. And so now, how about, do you go about the people that you're able to have there and live at the, you know, have residency right. there at well, the we have a We have an application process. Okay. Um, it's on our website, harvestoutreach.faith, and uh, 
James does all, he handles all the legal aspect of things because we're normally dealing with court situations mm -hmm. or uh, places like Turning Point, Mark Twain Behavioral. Uh, so we d deal with all the agencies around Hannibal that either provides you know, services like mental health and different things. And so we'll get people out of treatment centers or out of the jails and prisons. And, but it all starts with an application process. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we work with probation and pro, drug court, all these agencies, which has been a very vital aspect mm -hmm. of the ministry to have mm -hmm. that relationship with them. Right. And so they'll send people to us. And, uh, you know, we work very hard at, at uh, keeping a good reputation of what we do. Mm -hmm. And so they appreciate that and appreciate us. And so uh, we get people through all these, these different entities. And then you're also planting them in the Word. Mm -hmm and doing Bible studies yes. and so forth, things, yes. and different things like that. Yeah, we provide Bible studies at the houses. Uh, we awesome. have house meetings every week. We, we attempt to, and this is an area where we really need some help. Uh, one, of the, one of the most probably successful things that we've done in our program is we try to connect everybody with a spiritual mentor. Mm -hmm. And That's awesome. we've had uh, great success with the women. We've had plenty of volunteers to help at the women's house, mm -hmm. but not so much with the men. Mm. So if somebody's out there listening and, and they'd be willing to be a, a spiritual mentor in someone's life, mm -hmm. uh, we really have a need for some men to get involved in that. And that has been one of the most successful things that, that we do because that's a Bible study time. That's somebody putting some positive things in their lives, you know, and dealing with Christ and, right. and uh, encouraging them in that relationship. And they invest themselves in their lives. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes that means a cup of coffee. Sometimes it's a meal. Some okay. invite them to their homes and kind of get them involved in their family and everything else. So it's kind of up to the spiritual mentors just to where they want to take that. Okay. Now the ones that I like particularly either the men or the women, do you work with them as far as, I mean, are they working outside jobs? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they're working outside jobs. They're, uh, they're attending uh, treatment groups okay. such as our treatment providers. They're attending 12-step uh, uh, groups. Uh, church is mandatory. Uh, uh, we have Bible studies is mandatory, and then they uh, have to work also. So mm -hmm. we, we help them get because we're, we're supposed to be that in between spot between jails, prisons, and treatments and their own place. Right. So we want to be that spot in the middle to help get people ready to move out in their own life and to get their own place. Right. Mm -hmm. Establish them. They're yes. re reestablish them because yes. the ones like that I know that you have that would be coming out of prison. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of their issues is oh, yes. re-entering the yes. society mm -hmm. as a whole. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's neat because you all have a safe place for them, but yet you've given mm -hmm. them hope to, that they're going to make it. Exactly. You know, you're, and with God, exactly. all things are possible. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, one of the interesting things is you know, some, mm -hmm. some places have a, a time limit on how long a person can stay. Mm -hmm. you know, I remember uh, years ago I, I was in a halfway house that had 90 days. After 90 days, I, I was not prepared to move out. There was no nothing for that. No. So with us, we don't have a time limit how long a person can stay. Okay. Right. I mean, we got people that's been with us for two or three years now. Okay. And they really are not in a hurry to move on because they know that they're safe, they're alive, they're right. sober, doing right. the things right. they're supposed to be doing. Good. And sometimes they'll usually even become a part of the ministry mm -hmm. itself and do volunteer work for us. And so uh, we always tell everyone that comes that when you think you're ready to leave, you're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to stay longer. Right. And the people that have, you know, have had the most success are the ones that have been with us, you know, two or three years. Because, you know, you don't get it. You know, it's like people that, you know, they decide they're going to work out and they go to the YMCA. Right. And they got this big belly that they've took years putting on and they right. think they're going to get rid of it in a few weeks and they get discouraged. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's the same way with that life. When you come out of that life, you know, the devil's had you for a long time. Oh, yes. yes. And he's not going to let yes, go easy. You know, and it works a little differently. And, every, you know, some bad. people, when they, you know, they get, they come to Christ and they get delivered and they never look back. But mm -hmm. then you'll see others that they do, you know, continue in that struggle. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're there to get that foundation under them, and, and uh, they, you know, the longer they stay, the better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you were talking about the need, the need of mentors, you know, ones that would, would work, work with them and so forth like that. And I know a lot of times that's what somebody that has came from a lifestyle of that is, that's the tough part, is helping them to see the need also that I can't hang with the same friends right. I used to hang exactly. with. Exactly. And so you are giving them 
a people of, of a Christian lifestyle exactly. to Absolutely. be yes. this example yeah. before mm -hmm. them and, yes. and to, like you said, mentor. Yeah. And that's 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 how it's And that's the hard part of the addiction world too, is because a lot of times not only is it your friends, but it's also your family. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's hard to get that that thought process in your mind that being around your family might not be the healthy relationship for you. Mm -hmm. So it's good if you can put those positive things in their life. Right. And then you know, a lot of these folks, they have there's just not a lot of skills that they have developed. So we do right. a lot of life coaching type mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and. Uh, we've got so we've had some volunteers who are willing to work with them on job skills and, and things like that. So mm -hmm. and budgeting, yeah, and budgeting, yeah, finances mm -hmm. is a real big thing. Oh yeah, we, we would teach people how to do laundry. Oh, right. <laughs> right. We got a lot of men that don't know how to do laundry. <laughs> right. They don't know how to do laundry, don't and, know how to cook. Don't uh -uh. Know. Can't figure out yeah. why that came out a right. different color. That's you know, right. it's not supposed to. <laughs> exactly. It's not supposed to be that. So we try to put all that these things awesome. in their life to get mm -hmm. them, yeah. you know, on that path they need to be on. So yeah. And so many of us take stuff like that for granted that, you know, that they they struggle with things like that. Yeah, they right. need guidance and, they do. They and sure especially to mm -hmm. root them in, in the word of God and yeah. to have that safe place. But yet you all are giving them hope mm -hmm. right. too that, right. you know, I, I can do this, right. you know, together. Yes. With God, we can do it. Right. Well, I think we see a lot of places in Scripture where the uh, mature Christian is supposed to get yes. the newcomer and the new person yes. in church and really help mm -hmm. them and train them up how to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that talks about the elders Absolutely. teaching the younger, yes. you know, and so forth. Yep. So, And why to recreate the wheel if somebody's been there that exactly. they can mm -hmm. minister, you know, and, and right. to guide them in that way too. Exactly. So, so what about your Feed America that you're involved? Well, with our Feed America program, we give out about 30, 35 boxes every Friday. Uh, we, we partner with the food bank. We partnered with uh, uh, the, the, the agencies that the food bank works with in order to get mm -hmm. enough food to whoever shows up on Friday between 12 and 2 at our locations to uh, get a box of food. And so we was able to expand on uh, that uh, program and we're, we're getting around 80,000 pounds of food we're giving out a year now. And it's, it's a lot of food. It is a lot of food. It's a, a lot of work, but it's, it's well worth it to, to give mm -hmm. people the access to it. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes a food box is great, but with a family of four, family of five, a food box doesn't go real long. Mm -hmm. So we're able to be that in-between spot to, to help with all those areas. And so how has the pandemic affected that particular area of ministry? Well, the has it for you all, you know. It has yeah, yeah. affected us greatly. Yes. Um, like with our uh, loaves and fishes program, we do a hot meal or a meal uh, Monday through Friday from five to six, every Monday through Friday, whoever shows up getting a meal. We were doing about 40 or 50 a night. Now we're doing about 100, 110 a night. So we've, we've yeah. over doubled yes, because of the doubled. pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When the, uh, you know, when the church is closed during the pandemic, we've, since 1998, when God's Harvesters started Loaves and Fishes, we've, uh, we've done it out of the Methodist Church there in Hannibal. And uh, so when they closed because of the pandemic, then we, uh, the Nutrition uh, Center partnered with us for a while. And so they were doing a grab-and-go meal there we were paying for. It. And uh, then when, that, when they were able to open the Nutrition Center back up, we didn't have any place to do Loaves and Fishes because the Methodist Church was still closed. Mm -hmm. So uh, Helping Hand, a Baptist church in Hannibal, had built a new building, and so they allowed us to use our old church, their old church, which is what we're operating out of now. Mm -hmm. okay. But the problem is it's not handicap accessible and those kind of things, so mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's great for what we're doing with the grab-and-go meals, but uh, we really need our own facility, facility, so that's the exciting thing that's going on with us now. Right. We're in the process of uh, trying to build our own building. Mm -hmm. We purchased a lot on 10th and Lyon, and uh, we just had a fundraiser two weeks ago at, down at the Rialto, had a great response, and uh, the Riedel Foundation, who has been one of our major supporters, especially over the last couple of years, had offered us a $30,000 matching grant and so through donations and then through the, uh, the auction that we did at the banquet and things like that, we were able to raise, I think it was around $32,000. So, awesome, that yeah. is wonderful. And we just got, we've got a, a grant offer right now, $5,000, a matching grant, so that'll be another $10,000. So we're really looking forward to uh, getting things going and getting this building that we can operate out of. And then 
we'll be able to go back to an in-dining meal, but we will also continue the, the grab-and-go, too, for folks that aren't comfortable coming in mm -hmm. and doing the dining. Mm -hmm. Do it this way ought to really expand us even further. We've doubled during the pandemic, but we're hoping and thinking that with uh, our own location, we can double again. Right. And really meet other needs. Because right. there's a lot of pe hungry people. Mm -hmm. Not only hungry for food, but hungry for the Word of God so we can mm -hmm. offer more uh, uh, prayer, more devotions, more uh, music, more uh, worship, more everything with the people of the Hannibal, Missouri. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. wonderful. And then we'll have, it's going to be a two story building. We'll have a, a walk in basement type where we'll do all of the food ministries out of. Because right now we operate out of, uh, operate out of three different places. Yes. Really. For Feed America, our, uh, Donna Rogers is our new uh, Loaves and Fishes and Feed America coordinator, which we're, we partnered with United Way. We're a United Way agency now, and they provide the funds for us to have that coordinator. Okay. And she's on Fridays before Feed America. She's a busy gal. Yes. Having to go here imagine. and there and picking up food and getting it down to the Helping Hand Church. Right. So it'll be great to have all that under one roof. Yes. And then with the upstairs, we're going to open that up to the community. It'll be pretty much an open floor space so you know we could they can do meetings there we can uh, we could do fundraisers there um, you know they could have uh, some services do AA meetings I mean just anything that that the community needs that that building could supply we want to make that available to the community that is wonderful that is wonderful so really you are when I stop to think about some of your ministries and uh, Feed America and then your loaves and the fishes and so forth your truly doing that outreach that we were talking about the scripture of the, of, at the beginning you know of our outreach connections and you're feeding them yes. physically but mm -hmm. you're feeding them spiritually right. too right. and right. so they're they're being fed yes. in, in a way that they're going to be able to right. grow in Christ right. and, and be, yeah. walk in a yeah. new life yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. You know, very much so. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. One of the things that I might mention that we have need of in this new building is we've been looking for an engineer to come alongside of us because we have to have engineered plans to uh, present to the city. So mm -hmm. if you're an engineer out there and yes. you want to you wanna get involved in this and uh, give this gift to the Lord, yes. uh, we'd be more than happy to work with you. Mm -hmm. That so, is wonderful. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about possibly some of the areas that you're looking for people to connect as far as volunteering, if, okay. whether it's with the food or like you were talking a while ago about mentoring with the people, you know, and so mm -hmm. forth like that. So what are some of those areas that people can connect with you? There's a lot of different kind of areas, you know, like with the building, we will need uh, somebody who likes to cook, maybe to taint, teach people how to cook, because that's one of the mm -hmm. things we're running into, like Pastor Larry was talking about earlier at the Harvest Houses, we're running into a lot of men and women that do not know how to cook. How to cook. Wow. They, they think the McDonald's supplies <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner, yes. yeah. and that, that hurts your finances when people don't have it to begin with, mm -hmm. to be able to feed a family on McDonald's, you can't do it, No. and to, to have some people that can, uh, that can help train those kind of things. So we're looking for all types of experiences. Okay. You know, uh, I think a lot of people think that, oh, I can't lead a, a, a class, or I can't lead a Bible study. Can you cook a meal? Mm -hmm. Can you uh, teach people how to do laundry? We'll have a laundry service at this new building where people can come in and learn, because we've got a lot of guys that do have never done laundry before <laughs> in their life. <laughs> so we're constantly teaching them how to use laundry machines. Right. So there's a lot of different ways that uh, churches can help. There's a lot of different ways that individuals can help okay. uh, meet these needs of the people, because, you know, if we can get people to, uh, to a part of their life where they're, they're, they're growing, they're maturing, mm -hmm. uh, not only in, in life stuff, but mainly in the Gospels, right. then that we can really take them to another mm -hmm. level in their life. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, and of course, being the spiritual <coughs> mentors, um, mm -hmm. just, you know, coming by and spending time with people, you know, talking with them. Um, we've, uh, helping with the food ministry, it takes a lot of work. It does. Uh, when we get the food truck in on um, Fridays, it's once, or Wednesday, excuse me, it's the first Wednesday of the month. Um, there's a lot of labor involved mm -hmm. in that, depending on how many pallets of food you get. Right. So, you know, there's ways that they could help with that. We're always needing like a truck and trailer for that. Um, so there's just, there's a lot of different ways that, that people can get involved and uh, actively involved. Uh, financially, of course, always. Yes. Right. You know, 
it's kind of, you know, our ministry reminds me often of the scripture, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. That's right. And then, uh, you know, we, one of the things that we've tried to develop since we started 11 years ago is getting the churches of the area behind this because we're the only one that does this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to think about making this like maybe a part of your mission giving or something like that, you know. Yeah. I mean, if, if you had a bunch of churches that just give $20 a month, it would be such yeah. a huge blessing. Mm -hmm. We could get a lot more done. And so... There's just uh, many areas, you know, we always encourage people just give us a call, go to okay. our website, our phone numbers are on there. Okay. Uh, give us a call and, and we'll sit down. We usually, we meet with you and then we figure out ways that we can plug you in. Awesome, mm -hmm. that's wonderful. Well, so labor, I mean, uh, you know, as we're talking about all this stuff, you know, if somebody's handy with carpentry, mm -hmm. we can always use, because we're, we're working on a phase three with our men's house. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we work in three different phases. Phase one is kind of an entry, introduction phase, phase two is an aftercare phase, but we're trying to do an extended long-term stay too for the guys that's been three years. Okay. So we're building apartments. We had to put that on hold because we're working in this community center, but mm -hmm. we're gonna need uh, laborers there. So yeah. people who want to help, there's tons of ways. Yeah. There is. Mm -hmm. They can yeah. connect. Right. There's they some place connect. that yep. they yeah. can connect. Through the years, all, I mean, every building <laughs> we've bought because we, it's the ones we can afford. <laughs> right. They they've sure. have to have all kinds of repairs. So we've constantly, from the moment we started, uh, once we moved, we started out in a rental house, and then once we've moved from that and had our own buildings, we have constantly been under construction and, mm -hmm. and repairs. And, and we've had some volunteer groups for some churches that have come and helped with that. Uh, the Bethel Baptist Builders has been a great help to us. They've done a lot of work on our buildings. That's wonderful. Uh, Believers Church did a lot of uh, work on the women's first mm -hmm. women's house that we bought. Mm -hmm. So we have had some of that, but not to the extent that we need. And so there's... There's, if you've got a group that's looking for some community service or your church that wants to do some mission work, mm -hmm. we've got it for you. Yes, <laughs> it's there to do. Yeah. There's, uh, sure. that's, that's wonderful. So there's no need to, to not be active that's in right. doing something. You yes, know, if, if God lays it on someone's heart, they need to come. Mm -hmm. Amen. And connect with you all and say, "Hey, this sure. is this is what I can do. Exactly. You know, what would you like yeah. me to do? Where can I fulfill?" So basically, that give me. We were talking just about you know that a, anyone can donate, mm -hmm. and there's always the needs for the funds, and so forth. And so, again, tell us how we can go about getting that donation to you or well they can go on our website harvestoutreach.faith and they okay. can at the top has a donation button they can do through that okay or good. they can uh, mail a check mm -hmm. or they can call um, if they're just wanting to volunteer time or something they can call and we'll get them hooked up there's there's several different ways okay so um, I don't want people to think that they can't give because they can't find it right. but there's a lot of different right. ways that they can right. right right and our business address is on there it's 1732 Hope, Hope Street, Street. okay mm -hmm. in Hannibal Missouri okay so yeah, I think it's just kind of neat that we're on Hope Street because that's what we try to offer. That's it. So, yeah, that's that's what we were talking this, this <laughs> discussing a while ago. I thought you you give them a safe place and you give them hope in exactly. Christ, and that's exactly. awesome. So, real quick, can you maybe tell us a story that just stands out of someone mm -hmm. that you all have been able to minister to? Oh my, we have so there's many. so many. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can have we uh, one? one of our ladies, uh, Tina Whitman that uh, she came out of Vandalia Prison. Uh, she's been on this program before, mm -hmm. in fact. And uh, she came out of Vandalia Prison, uh, been in and out of prison ever since she was a young girl, had destroyed her liver in her early 20s mm -hmm. uh, with drugs and miraculously got a liver transplant that she shouldn't even have been able for. But oh, God had God. a plan. Yeah, but God. So, exactly. <laughs> so but so God she moment. come to us, uh, oh, it's been about four years ago maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, wound up being the, our house manager for the women's house and then got married. Uh, her and her husband are part of, of our church at Brush Arbor. And so she's usually our, we, we tease her and call her our star people. <laughs> and so a lot of times she'll go and speak for us. And uh, whenever t Tina shares her testimony, uh, there's usually the crowd is full of tears because mm -hmm. it's an amazing testimony of a life that was destroyed. You know, the first Bible verse that I memorized when I became a Christian and I think it's because of the life that I came out of was the thief, John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, kill and to destroy. That is it. But Jesus mm. said that I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yes. And she abundantly. is definitely mm. an example of that. To see her now and to, to talk with her, to know her, 
you would never, people are just shocked that mm -hmm. she lived, that she had the life that she had. Uh, wow. James and Chris took her down to Florida mm -hmm. a couple of years ago to reunite with her children that she had no Isn't relationship it? and had not seen. They were taken away from Such her when she was young and that family's been restored. They have a great relationship mm -hmm. now That's and uh, it's just awesome to hear her testimony. We've been having some of the ladies at the ladies house have been sharing their testimonies at our church this year and, and our cool. people are just because they know them now <clears throat> and they cannot imagine that they lived that life before because right, right. they see what Christ has done yes. and they cannot eat. Awesome testimonies. So yeah. after you telling and giving us those stories, do you mind praying sure. and just pray for us to. today? Yes, okay. please. All right, Father, we just thank you for this time that we've had to, to glorify you that you are the one true God yes. of the universe, that you are the changer of hearts and lives. Lord, you've told us in your covenant that, that you will cleanse us, that you will give us a new heart, you will give us a new spirit, and you will cause us to walk in your statutes and to be careful to obey your rules, mm -hmm. that we are new creations in Christ Jesus, that the old's passed away and behold all things become new. And God, we thank you for new lives. Yes. We thank you that you're a never changing God, that there is nothing that is impossible with you. That Lord, today we wanna pray for those that are out there that are struggling in their addictions, that they, you, they feel that they have no worth, they feel that they have no hope. Yes. And yet God, you have told us in your word that you, you have caused us to be born again to a living hope. Because of your abundant mercy, you caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So Lord, I pray for anyone that is listening today that is struggling, that is beaten down by the world, that the thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy in their lives, that God, you would set them free, that you would do a work in their heart that only you can do, that you would fill them with your spirit and that they would walk in the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ with you living in and through them. Mm -hmm. So Lord, we thank you that, we thank you Lord for those that you're gonna save today, that those that you will save tomorrow because we know God that every day you're changing lives. Every day you're giving hope. So Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you've brought to, to not just our ministries, but all ministries. God, we thank you for the way that you've blessed WTJR yes. through the years and, yes, and the growth and the people thank that you. it reaches. And so, Lord, we just pray that in, in all that we do, we will honor you, that you will receive the glory. And God, we pray that, that people will come to know that Jesus loves them. Mm -hmm. Just like the old song says, Jesus loves me, this I know. That you're about love, God. You're about grace, you're about mercy. And, only, and you are the changer of hearts. So Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, that those that are Thank listening you, today that are lost, that they would be obedient to your word, that they would seek the Lord, the Bible tells us, while you may be found, and call upon you while you are near. Yes. Lord, I'm reminded of, of what Paul said in the Corinthians, that for our sake, for our sake, you made Jesus to become sin who knew no sin, so that through Jesus, we can become right with you. We can become the righteousness of God. So thank you for what you have done. Thank you for the desire that you have put in our hearts. So Lord, I pray today for those that, that, that listen to this program, that maybe, maybe it's not your calling for our ministry, but they will, they will want to live for you. They will want to be used by you. They, God, you have told us that, that we are to be a living sacrifice, yes. that that is our worship. That yes. is our spiritual worship, that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice to you. So Lord, for those that are, that, that are today that are wondering, what can I do? How can I get involved? God, we pray that, that they would either reach out to, to Harvest Outreach Ministries or the churches in the areas that they're in or, or wherever the church that you have them and say, I just want to serve the Lord. I want to live for Jesus. I want to honor him. I want to be a light in the darkness. Thank you, Jesus. So thank you, Father, for what you've done in our hearts. Thank you that you set the captives free. You've said that Jesus is the truth and that the truth sets us free. You've said that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to you except through Jesus. 
So it's in the mighty name and the wonderful name and the miraculous name of Jesus mm -hmm. that we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 Father. Jesus. Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301.